What is this? It is the Holy Spirit. I've come to awaken you to my presence in each of you, to remind you of the power and authority that is at your beck and call. If you but speak my word, my word will reveal my presence, my anointing, my power, and my glory. For it is all within you, but a breath away, a word spoken, and my presence is released, saith the Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, uh, Jody. Great word. Thank you, Suzanne, as well. Everybody, praise the Lord. Thank you for bringing the Spirit with you. Yeah. Praise the Lord. And uh, you may be seated. God bless you. I want to thank uh, everyone joining us on Facebook, live streaming, and we appreciate you uh, participating in the service wherever you are, and God is with you. Amen. There's no distance in the Holy Spirit, so God is moving. Amen. And we never know exactly, uh, because we have a tendency to think in the natural terms, and uh, even when we try to get out there, (laughs) praise the Lord, we find out uh, we're still coming a little bit short of his mind and his way of moving in our presence, praise the Lord, so... Not to be fearful, but, uh, but to be bold and just trust that uh, if we miss it a little, he knows how to get us back on the spot. Praise the Lord. So God is great. Amen. We're living in a tremendous times. I know it's weird and it's strange and it's a little frightening, but these are the best of times as well because it's a time that God's going to move in mighty ways, in ways that we have yet to experience. I think we're going to see some things that no man has seen. Amen. We're going to get to experience God in a way uh, that uh, no one really has. Praise the Lord. He tells us he's, in these last days there will be works that are even greater than what Jesus did. And uh, it's not to be arrogant to say, I want to be part of that. I want to, I want to participate in it. Yes. He tells us that's what we're supposed to do. So praise the Lord. Let's, uh, let's get greedy for God. Yeah. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. All right, God bless all of you. Appreciate you again being here, and uh, thank you for sharing. And you know what? Y'all have something that you feel like the Lord has given you. We want to participate. I know we take chances doing that, but uh, hey, He's a big God, you know. So uh, trust the Lord. Amen. And let Him have His way. Praise the Lord. All right. Uh, I don't know. I got my head is just spinning right now, so. Hallelujah. I'm going to try to uh, move on with this and be uh, sensitive to the Lord at the same time. So, Peter, let's, uh, let's start with Revelation chapter 2, verse 1. <clears throat> Praise God. Again, thank you all for being here, and uh, we appreciate it. And those of you that are watching online and participating online, you're part of this just as much as anyone else. Amen. As I said, there's no distance in the spirit. We love having the people here, the body coming together, but we understand that there are situations and circumstances that uh, dictate other things, and so we're just grateful to have everybody involved. Praise the Lord. So, under the angel of the church of Ephesus write, These things saith he that holdeth the seven stars in his right hand, who walketh in the midst of the seven golden candlesticks. Verse 8. And unto the angel of the church in Smyrna write, These things saith the first and the last, which was dead and is alive. Verse 12. And to the angel of the church in Pergamos, Pergamos, or Pergamos, take your pick. 
Right. These things saith he which hath the sharp sword with two edges. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Verse 18. And under the angel of the church in Thyatira, he called him. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. I'm, try, I'm trying to behave. Praise God. <laughs> These things saith the Son of God, who hath his eyes like unto a flame of fire, and his feet are like brass. Ooh. Hallelujah. Revelation 3, verse 1. And under the angel of the church in Sardis write, These things saith he that hath the seven spirits of God and the seven stars. I know thy works, that thou hast a name, that thou livest, and art dead. Verse 7. To the angel of the church in Philadelphia write, These things saith he that is holy, that is true, he that hath the key of David, he that openeth and no man shutteth, and shutteth and no man openeth. Verse 14. Uh, excuse me, yes, verse 14. And under the angel of the church of the Laodiceans write, These things saith the Amen, the faithful and the true witness, the beginning of the creation of God. Praise the Lord. Many kinds of angels. Cherubim, seraphim, warring angels, ministering angels. And there are other angels. Secret angels. Earth angels. Earth angels. Earth. Don and I and Ron are probably the only ones who remember that, maybe. Right? Anyhow, praise the Lord. Earth angels. They walk in the earth. They're in flesh and blood. Earthbound. Different from the others, but still angels. And we've always believed, you know, angels, you tell me angels, I'm thinking, you know, beings that are not of flesh and blood. Wings and multiple faces and all sorts of things, right? But in the Greek, the word angel is angelo or agalos. In Hebrew, the word angel is malach. Look at Haggai 1, 13. Haggai 1, verse 13. Then spake Haggai, the Lord's messenger, in the Lord's message unto the people, saying, I am with you, saith the Lord and the King James. In other versions it says, Then spake Haggai, the Lord's angel. You can look it up for yourself. I'm not making it up just to fit the message. I'm telling you that's what it says, angel. Messenger of the Lord's message unto the people, saying, I'm with you, saith the Lord. Luke chapter 7, verse 24. And when the messengers of John were departed, he began to speak unto the people concerning John. No, I'm sorry, is that Luke 7, 24? Well, that messed me up big time. Praise the Lord. Let me look at this. Anyway, let me just, let me, without going back and killing time here, let me just say that John, it says, the messenger of God who came before Jesus. That literally in the Greek says, John, the angel of God who came to pronounce or declare Jesus. I'll find the scripture and give it to you if, you, if you if you're doubting me. But my point is this: Haggai and John were both flesh and blood, and yet both of them were called angels. Both of them were called angels of God. Praise the Lord. If you're wondering why I'm I'm writing this stuff at three o'clock in the morning sometimes, and uh, I'm looking at scripture and I think I'm looking at one thing, and apparently I'm looking at something else. I only wear these to see, praise God. So, so what is an angel? 
It's a being that's sent by God. A messenger. An emissary. Something on a divine assignment. Bringing God's message. Bringing God's word. Especially to those who live in the earth. Warring with the word of God. With the spirit of God. Secret angels, earth angels. There are those that are born again, born from above, born from heaven. God's messengers who bear the message of God to those who live in the earth. The message is the good news. In Greek, it's called evangel. The English uh, word we use is evangelism. But in each of those words is another word, angel. It's no accident. See, if you'll speak the message of heaven to those on earth and live by faith, your life becomes angelic. And we need to take up our angelic assignment and bring the word of God to earth. You are all Secret angels, earth angels, messengers of God, carriers of the Spirit of God, the weapons of God, the Word of God. Just as Jody spoke, just as Suzanne spoke. Listen, we're not communicating online about any of this stuff. I didn't know anything they were going to say. I just know Jody had asked if she could open. Period. Now look at Acts chapter 4. Verse 26 through 31. And I'm telling you, what goes around comes around. I mean, uh, we're just, uh, this, this that I'm going to read to you, it could be today. No new thing under the sun. The kings of the earth stood up and the rulers were gathered together against the Lord and against his Christ. That's what most of this is about. We can call it all sorts of things. We can call it COVID. We can call it racial unrest. We can call it, uh, you know, uh, gender confusion, <laughs> gender choices, uh, abortion. I'm telling you, it's war. Yeah. It's just war. And it's been going on for a long time, and it will go on until God stops it, and he's going to do that through us, through the body of Christ. We start loving, stop dividing, stop finding things to separate ourselves and think, find things to bring us together. Yes. Hallelujah. The kings of the earth stood up and the rulers were gathered together against the Lord and against his Christ. For a truth against thy holy child Jesus, whom thou hast anointed, both Herod and Pontius Pilate, with the Gentiles, or the unbelievers, and the people of Israel, were gathered together. For to do whatsoever thy hand and thy counsel determined before to be done. And now, Lord, behold their threatenings, and grant unto thy servants that with all boldness they may speak thy word by stretching forth thy hand to heal, and that signs and wonders may be done by the name of thy holy child, Jesus. And when they had prayed, the place was shaken where they were assembled together, and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost, and they spoke the word of God with boldness. Somebody say, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise God. Let me just tell you, anything that God can do through all of His church, He can do through a local church. Amen. Anything He can do through a group of believers, He can do through a small handful of believers. Amen. Dispatching angels. Praise God. The functions of the Holy Ghost are the abilities to work the works of God, and they're called gifts. Amen. And he said, by uh, Paul speaking by the Holy Spirit, said, having then gifts differing according to grace that is given us. And now concerning spiritual gifts, brethren, covet earnestly the best gifts. When he ascended up on high, he gave gifts to men. We have these gifts. You shall receive power, yes. he said. And for too long, churches, and I'm not going to talk about anybody else today. I'll just talk about us. Praise the Lord. 
For too long, we have said some other time. So in the future, it'll take place. Somehow, Lord, somewhere, sometime. Yeah. Not now, but soon. Some other place. Not here. We're just this little bunch, and we're not all cool and don't have it all together, and we're not on TV, and we don't have a mega church, and someone else. Not me. I, I'm just, I'm Nathan for crying out loud. Y'all know me. Praise the Lord. Look at Mark chapter 16. 9 through 12. Always looking for a reason that it can't happen now, can't happen here, can't happen to me. Praise the Lord. Now when Jesus was risen early the first day of the week, he appeared first to Mary Magdalene, out of whom he had cast seven devils. And she went and told them that had been with him as they mourned and wept. And they, when they had heard that he was alive and had been seen of her, believed not. Now this is where it gets interesting. After that, he appeared in another form yeah. unto two of them as they walked and went into the country. Now that could be a metaphor for a lot of things, but I'm telling you, it's us. It's something they didn't recognize as being Jesus, but it was every bit Jesus. Yeah. It was the Spirit robed in something that they hadn't recognized or couldn't recognize. And he's telling us through this one little word. You, they may not recognize you as me, but if you'll start speaking the word, what do they say? Their hearts burned in them. Yes. When he began to share the truth of God's word yes. by the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Another form. Unrecognized. Faith says anything he did, anywhere. Anything he did, he'll do here. Anything he did, he'll do now. Anything he did, he'll do through us. Anything he's done at any time, he will do now. He is the I am. He is the now God. It's us that are looking to the future. It's us that are looking to the past or looking to somebody else. He's always right now. He's always I am. He's always ready. And we just talked about it last week. I am Nathan. Right? right? I mean, we all are I ams. Yes. Praise the Lord. Look at 2 Kings chapter 6, verse 15 through 17. 2 Kings 6, 15 through 17. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. And when the servant of the man of God was risen early and gone forth, behold, a host compassed the city, both with horses and chariots. And his servant said unto him, Alas, my master, oh, oh boy, yeah. OMG, if you get it over the uh, you know, web. <laughs> a host compassed the city, both with horses and chariots. And he said, Oh, my Lord, my master, how shall we do? Or what do we do now? And he answered, Fear not, for they that be with us are more than they that be with them. Praise God. And Elijah prayed and said, Lord, I pray thee, open his eyes that he may see. And the Lord opened the eyes of the young man, and he saw. And behold, the mountain was full of horses and chariots of fire round about Elijah, angels. I just, I challenge you right now, look around. Just look around. You're seated not only with angelic beings from another dimension that are all around us, but you're seated with earth angels all around you, everywhere. Open their eyes, Lord. Open our eyes that we might see what it is that we are and who we are and what we have all around us every moment of every day. Alas, my Lord, no! What are you freaking out about? Look around, open your eyes and see what you have available to you. Praise God. If he's ever used anybody, he'll use you. And by now, surely you realize we are at war. It's an ancient war. It's not a new thing. Abortion, I said. Gender modification. Political division. Racial division. COVID-19. 
It's all demonic. I, I've said it all the time. We are one. We are the human race. There's only one race. And you could, you, if you want to get, you know, really nitpicky about it, you could say, okay, there's two. There's the saved and the unsaved. The righteous and the unrighteous. That's it. I, I'm so sick of this being manipulated by the devil and creating hatred and variance and, and division when there really is none. Anybody, listen, God uses people and the devil uses people. So I'm not saying there aren't ignorant people doing ignorant things and, say, and you know, treating people the wrong way. I'm just saying that ain't God. That's not the truth. That is a lie of the devil and people buy into it like they do anything else. Just like the gender, the, the modification, the... The political hatred and variance and every, all of them are screwed up. Take my word for it. I don't know them all, but I'm just guessing based on 73 years of life. COVID-19. I ain't afraid of no COVID-19. Praise the Lord. I'm not against using common sense and, and using a little wisdom, but I, I, it, I'm not worried about it. Come see about me. I mean, come on, if that's... if if. If this thing, you know, what's the worst that can happen? I just preached a funeral a week ago, and that's what I said. The worst thing that can happen to us is heaven. The best thing ever. The best thing everybody's ever going to experience. So bring it on, Pettijohn, right? I mean, that's the old, that's just some of my insanity here. But I'm just saying, we're freaking out about stuff that God has given us power over. And I'm telling you, there are forces at work, and I'm not naming names. I'm saying there are spiritual forces yes. that are using people yes. to freak us out and to cause us to be in fear. And if you're in fear, you can't operate in faith. And so lock them down. Don't let them go to church. Hide in your basement. Whatever. Yep. Praise God. I'm tired of it. I'm tired of a serpent, a snake trying to run my, I, I stomp on those things, I hoe them, amen, I fling them, Sally gets a little timid around them because I freak her out, I'm always, she was gardening one day and she, I knew, I know she's paranoid about snakes, so I had a broken fan belt that's laying by in front of my truck and uh, she's out there, I see her kind of, you know, looking around as she's going out to the garden and Hey, she, she could be in the Olympics if they just would use, they use snakes. They just, she broke some records, I guarantee you, that day. And she nearly broke me. Yeah, it was really uncomfortable for a few days after that for me, but, but praise the Lord. I needed to lose a little weight at the time, so skipping meals wasn't a big deal. Praise God. Hallelujah. But I'm just saying... Anybody who hasn't realized that we're in war is sound asleep. Praise the Lord. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 12. Praise God. Hallelujah. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. 2 Corinthians 10, verse 3 through 7. 2 Corinthians 10, verses 3 through 7. For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they're mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds, casting down imaginations, and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. That's, all, that's what we're being bombarded with every day, 24 hours a day. Every major news outlet, all the uh, Facebook, uh, you know, I mean, it's just everywhere. Trying to get to our imagination, trying to get the way we think. Exalting itself above what God has said to get us into fear, to get us into panic, to get us paranoid, amen? To get us to, to back off and to be fearful and to not step up and, and reach out to people. Captivity, every thought to the obedience of Christ and having in readiness to revenge all disobedience when your obedience is fulfilled. Do ye look on things after the outward appearance? It's a question he's asking us. 
If any man trusts to himself that he is Christ, let him of himself think this again, that is, as Christ, even so are we Christ. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Speaking of snakes, I know you're thinking, where did that come from? Well, five minutes ago, I think I said something about snakes. I've had, listen, it's not age. I've had short-term memory loss since the 60s. Praise the Lord. For various reasons, but I'm past that right now. Praise the Lord. But there is a snake. A snake called Disapeltus, Disapeltus, Disapeltus scabra. And that snake is an egg-eating snake. And that's what it does. It swallows eggs. And that reveals a principle of the spirit realm. The serpent, as we've already said, is the symbol of evil. It's the symbol of our enemy. And what are eggs? They are from where life emerges. So it's obviously, it's symbolic of aborting babies. But it's also symbolic of aborting the purposes and the plans of God. And the truth is, that's what abortion is. The enemy uses it. Think of all the lives that may have been pastors, preachers, people praying for others, healing for others, raising families in the fear and the admonition of the Lord that have been wiped out. I'm telling you, innocent blood cries out. If, if one man's did in Genesis, can you imagine what millions are doing? Praise the Lord. So Moses, just kind of bring it into a context, Moses was supposed to free Israel. That was, that was God's purpose. That was God's plan. But in the days of his birth, there was a decree went out to kill all the, 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 born, the newborn children. And in fact, they, they were waiting there. It said as the, hand, as the uh, midwives would, would be with the children of Israel because they would they'd just squat wherever they were and have kids. I mean, they, they, these were... Healthy women, and that's, what, that's just what they did. And they were to be right there, so if, 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 if that child was born, they could snatch that child and kill it. They were supposed to kill all the Hebrew boys. And only a miracle of God allowed Moses to survive. And in Jesus' birth, Herod tried to kill the Messiah by killing all the children, all the male children from, I think, two years down. Destroying the children. An egg swallowing serpent. And I'll notice the enemy attacks at the beginning of God's purposes. Even before the beginning of God's purposes. God has spoken through his earth angels, through prophets, that he was going to gather the Jewish people back to Israel from all nations, resurrect Israel. But just before the words of those prophets were fulfilled, Nazism came on the scene, Nazis. And they almost wiped out the Jewish people before the word of God could be fulfilled. We think, what was that war all about? I can tell you what it was all about. It was about one lunatic one demonic lunatic trying to fulfill the purposes of Satan and stop the purposes of God. To do it before Israel could be reborn. The pattern repeats itself over and over. Who's the enemy? The preemptor pre tries to do things prior to, to God being able to inf- instill it or install it in, in, in through his people, through his body. He attacks the purposes of God. Not only after they begin, but before they begin. To preempt them, to stop it from ever taking place. Yeah. Let me tell you what this is all about. It's called the greatest revival that this world has ever seen. It's an end time revival. I'm not saying the end is tomorrow. We may have a couple of generations. All I'm saying is 
that this is an end time revival unlike any revival this world has ever known. And the devil knows it. He can sense it in the spirit. And so he's trying to preempt the purpose of God by getting us all freaked out and hiding and not having church and everybody bailing out and just figuring, well, you know, it hasn't happened up to this point. It probably isn't going to happen. It, it won't unless we step out in faith and do it. He attacks God's purposes. He's like the serpent that swallows the egg. We're seeing all the, all the abortions. Why? Because, I don't know, we, I think we just heard it or Suzanne talked about it. I don't know where I heard it. But anyway, there's always a something in the world happening that reflects what's going on in the spirit. Praise the Lord. He wants to wipe out the voice of God in the earth. Because the Word of God is this powerful sword in the mouth of a believer. The secret angels that are hidden in the earth. Praise the Lord. Declaring God's Word. And what is His Word? Spirit and life, Jesus said. It's yet to be born in many people. And I can tell you this, we are in the will of God. Don't be discouraged. Be encouraged. It's a good sign. See, the enemy doesn't waste time. He knows his time is short. He's going full speed ahead, doing everything he can. And he's doing everything he can to keep God's purpose from being accomplished. And he does it from generation to generation. Exodus chapter 17, Peter Verse uh, 8 through 16. Exodus 17, 8 through 16. Then came Amalek and fought with Israel in Rephidim. Moses said unto Joshua, Choose us out men. Now remember, the, this is the first warfare that Israel's had. I mean, first group of uh, people to attack them. They're supposed to be getting into the promised land, right? Well, they're not there. They're on their way. God told them, that's yours. It, 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 houses you didn't build, fields you didn't plant, you know, crops you didn't grow. All, it's all yours. It's, it's the rest. It's a type of Jesus. Amen? The promised land. And so Moses said unto Joshua, choose us out men and go out and fight with Amalek tomorrow. Now I'll stand on the top of the hill with the rod of God. Talk about a rod. Uh, didn't we hear something about a rod? I'll be there on the top of the hill with the rod of God in my hand. So Joshua did as Moses had said to him and fought with Amalek. And Moses and Aaron and Hur went up to the top of the hill. And it came to pass when Moses held out his hand, the rod, that Israel prevailed. And when he let down his hand, Amalek prevailed. But when he, when he held out the authority of God, the word of God, amen, when he took the weapon of God and held it out, Israel prevailed. Duh! When he dropped it, when he wasn't using the authority that he had from God, when he wasn't using the word that God had given him, what happened? Amalek prevails. Thank you, Jody. Praise the Lord. And Aaron and Ur stayed up his hands. A couple of earth angels. Praise the Lord. Held up the hands, one on the other side and the other on the other side, and his hands were steady until the going down of the sun, and Joshua discomfited, that's a nice way of saying kicked his butt, Amalek and his people with the edge of the sword. And the Lord said unto Moses, Write this for a memorial in a book, and rehearse it in the ears of Joshua, for I will utterly put out the remembrance of Amalek from under heaven. This is the Lord talking. I'm going to wipe this dude out at some point. Amalek is going to be no more. And Moses built an altar and called the name of it Jehovah Nissi. For he said, because the Lord hath sworn that the Lord will have war with Amalek from generation to generation. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amalek is a spiritual representation of Satan, the devil, the snake, the egg eater. Amen. The enemy. And someone who's at war with God's people. Someone who's at war with God. 
the Amalekites were the first to war with Israel. And the Amalekites were defeated. But the war goes on. Centuries later, a king comes on the scene by the name of Agag, a king who is evil, an Amalekite king, a descendant of Amalek. Look at 1 Samuel chapter 15, verse 1 through 3. Praise the Lord. We used to say in the Marine Corps, they may beat us, but they can't eat us. Well, we may have to rethink that. <laughs> Praise the Lord. But they're not going to beat us. They'll be devouring themselves. Yes. Praise God. Samuel also said unto Saul, The Lord sent me to anoint thee to be king over his people over Israel. Now therefore hearken thou unto the voice of the words of the Lord. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, I remember that which Amalek did to Israel, how he laid wait for him in the way when he came up from Egypt. Now go and smite Amalek and utterly destroy all that they have and spare them not, but slay both man and woman, infant and suckling, ox and sheep, camel and ass. Now you say, that's really cruel. We're dealing with it today. And because Saul was a weak leader, not obedient to the word of God and the voice of God, he took another path, a path of greed and stupidity, to be quite honest with you. Verse 18 and 19. God clearly told him, I don't want anything left of this because this thing's got to stop because I know it's going to go on and on and on until it is stopped. And the Lord sent thee on a journey and said, Go and utterly destroy the sinners of the Amalekites' fight. Okay? Utterly destroy the sinners, the Amalekites, the unbelievers, the godless, and fight against them until they are consumed. Let's eat them before they eat us. Wherefore then didst thou not obey the voice of the Lord, but didst fly upon the spoil, and didst evil in the sight of the Lord. You went for the goodies and left them to do their thing. Now there's, you know, there's analogies here and metaphors I could go on all day long, but we're talking political talk here. You went for the greed. You went for the money and let them continue to kill the babies. Let them continue to do the evil. Let, let the world go on in its stupidity and its chaos and confusion. Just fill your pockets and don't worry about it. But did fly upon the spoil and did evil in the sight of the Lord. Praise the Lord. Verse 26 and 27. And because there's nothing new under the sun, folks, I can tell you it's going to happen again. And Samuel said unto Saul, I will not return with thee, for thou hast rejected the word of the Lord. Saul wanted him to go to the temple and make him look good. Give me communion. Some of you may know that I'm talking about. Praise the Lord. I will not return with thee, for thou hast rejected the word of the Lord. And the Lord has rejected you from being king over Israel. Now, he's rejected, but he's still king. And as Samuel turned about to go away, he laid hold upon the skirt of his mantle and it rent. Repentance came a little late. Verse 32 and 33. I'll let you all draw your own conclusions and Add and subtract whoever you want to here. But then said Samuel, Bring ye hither to me Agag, the king of the Amalekites. And Agag came unto him delicately. And he said, Surely the bitterness of death is past. They're going to give me a pass. They're not going to kill me because the king didn't kill me. This is the religious group. This is, this is the, the church. I got it made now. Surely the bitterness of death is past. And Samuel said, As the sword hath made women childless, so shall your mother be childless among women. And Samuel hewed Agag in pieces before the Lord at Gilgal. 
I'm not suggesting we do this. I'm just saying. The Lord, the vengeance is mine, saith the Lord. What you sow, you will reap. Praise God. I'll just add this. It isn't in my notes. We are kings and priests. And we could argue this politically and all the rest of it, and I'm not going there. I'll just let you do those metaphors on your own. But Saul was no longer king as far as God was concerned. He put him there because God puts people in those positions and gives them opportunities. And opportunities to repent. But David was king as far as God was concerned. But David fought battles after battle after battle because only God recognized him as king. But ultimately, he was king. And Saul was removed. In fact, Saul ended up dying because he wouldn't do the honorable thing. Now, we can say the same thing. I, I know where everybody's heads are going here, and I'm not, I'm not, I'm, I am, but I'm not. What I'm saying is this. We are kings and priests. The devil is the god of this world, little g. He wants to be king of this world, and he was for a while, but he's not anymore. We've been given kingship, but not everybody acknowledges it. We've got to win it back. We've got to take the finished work of Christ and make it our finished work. We have to exercise our authority as kings and priests in this world. And God will honor it, even if nobody else does. And if nobody else does, but God does, that's good enough for me. I'll take that majority. But that's the world we're living in. And if you think just because he called you a king and a priest means you get to sit on the throne and enjoy life, you got another thing coming. You're going to have to fight for that. And that's where we're at right now. The good news is we're going to win. We will be crowned even though we won't keep the crown. We'll just toss it back because we know where it belongs. And Samuel said, as the sword hath made women childless, so shall your mother be childless among women. And he hewed Agag in pieces before the Lord. And praise God. Another battle in the ancient war, but again, not the last. Centuries later, God's Jewish people, God's people, the Jews. That's us today. We are the children of God. They were scattered throughout Persia. You all know the story. A Persian official, Haman, rises to power. Another snake wanting to destroy God's people and to silence the word of God. And he connived to destroy every man, woman, and child of God in that nation. But God used faith and a messenger, a word to the king to overturn Haman's plan. Haman ended up being destroyed by his own device, fell into the snare that he had set for others. God's people were saved. And I'll show you the connection in Esther chapter 3, verse 1. After these things did King Ahasuerus promote Haman, the son of Hamadatha, the Agagite, and advanced him and set his seat above all the princes that were with him. This is prior to the whole debacle. Haman was connected to Agag. He was a grandson, basically, of Agag. And Agag was of Amalek, the egg-eating snakes. And Amalek is still warring against God's people. His people, his word, his purposes. That ancient war continued and continues to the day. Different geography, different locations, different language, Another setting, but the same war against you and me, the children of God.
God's word is true. And it doesn't change. Earth angels, messengers of God. I'm telling you this morning, prophesy to yourself. Don't depend on everybody else. I mean, it's good to have prophets. It's good to have prophets prophesy over you. But you can't always get a prophet. But you can prophesy over yourself, and you do that through the Word of God. It's exactly what Jody was talking about this morning. Suzanne as well. You can speak the Word. You can take that message that you speak to yourself to somebody else. Matthew 28, 18 and 19. Praise the Lord. Matthew 28, 18 and 19. Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Go you, therefore, teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, which name is Jesus. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Look at Acts chapter 1 and verse 8. You shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and you shall be witnesses, messengers, angels unto me, both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria and the uttermost parts of the earth. The power of the Spirit. The power through God's Word to become able to do whatever you could not do before. Dunamis, it's called. And we've all heard all that stuff. You shall receive power. You shall receive dunamis. What is dunamis? It's what's above your natural ability to do. And there's another word for it. It's called dunamahi. And that is the power of I can. Can what? It has no qualifications. It's literally the power of I can do anything. It's the power to do all things. The power to do whatever you need to do to fulfill the purpose of God, the will of God, and the word of God in your life. There's no limitation. It's the power of powers. The power to nullify and overcome every I can't in your life. Dunamahi. Look at Philippians 4.13. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. That's the dunamis. That's the dunamahi. The I can do anything and everything. It's the power of the I can of the Almighty. You shall receive power to destroy the snake, the egg-eating snake, the Amalekite, and overcome every work of the devil. Covet earnestly the best gifts. I'll take the I can. I'll take the power I can. So you can operate in all the power. And he said they, they prayed and the place was shaken. The I can. Operate in that power and you can shake the place wherever you are. The places that need to be shook, you can shake them. Praise God. Acts 4, we'll wrap up with this. Acts chapter 4. 29 through 31. Now, Lord, behold their threatenings and grant unto thy servants that with all boldness they may speak thy word. Grant to your angels, your earth angels, with boldness will speak your word. By stretching forth your hand to heal, Signs and wonders may be done by the name of your holy child, Jesus. And when they had prayed, the place was shaken, the place where they were assembled, and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit, and they spoke the, God, the word of God with boldness. The angels of the church, we can. Praise the Lord. Give the Lord a hand this morning. Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I'm telling you, the Lord, I, I, you know, I'm not going to get into all of it, but we've been talking about, you know, God getting us up and 
reaching out to him. And just like the songs this morning, I want to see your face. That's something that I'm constantly praying to see your glory. I'm, you know, don't put me in the rock. <laughs> just let me out. I want to see everything. I want to experience everything. And God wants that. I wouldn't be wanting it if he didn't want me to want it. That's the thing. It's, it's in us because the Spirit is drawing us to that. We need to, we need to in order to see that, see, sometimes we're thinking, you know, I want to see a reflection. I want to see something. But you know what God says? It's like your face in the water. I reach and I see something reaching back. I smile and I see a smile back at me. I frown, I see a frown, right? This is God. He's saying, if you're reaching for it, so am I. We'll touch, right? He, if we put our face in the water, you don't see anything. I don't know if I'm saying this like I should, but what I'm saying is you're seeing God every time you look in the mirror. It's, it's an image that you don't recognize. It's that form not recognized that Jesus was sharing the word of God with these people in a form that they didn't acknowledge as being God. And yet their hearts burned within them as the word was spoken to them. We need to start laying hands on the sick. We need to start speaking to devils. We need to start casting them out. We need to start speaking the word of God over situations and circumstances. And forget about the, forget about the result, all right? You may have had negative you know, success in the past or maybe sporadic success. Forget that. Just do it and leave it in God's hands. The more we do it, the more confidence we'll have in it, the more faith we'll exercise in it, and the more we'll see the, the, the results of God's word. This isn't about us. I, what have we got to be ashamed of? They're mocking us and, and laughing at us anyhow. Yeah. Let's, give them, let's give them something back. Yeah. Amen. I'm, I'm talking about fist fights in the street. We've all been down that path years ago. It's a little late for me in the game. Amen. Plus, I don't want to go there. I want to be a representative of God. I don't want to just, you know, road rage and a nut case and everything else. Plus, it will hurt now. It hurt so much when I was 20 or 30, you know, but now it's painful. I'm just saying, let God take the punches. Let's, let's do the th throwing of the punches through the Word of God. Let's take that double-edged sword that He has made available to us and let's let it, let it loose in the land. You get an opportunity to pray for, pray for Him and be bold about it. No more of these little, oh, I don't, hope I don't offend them. Hey, they're, they're already offended or they wouldn't be willing to let you pray. Amen. I mean, they're offended at something or they're not looking for prayer. Just love them and pray for them and believe God's going to work miracles in their lives. And he will. These, we, these people are no different than us. It's the I can that we have to operate from. Praise the Lord. I am Nathan and I can because I am said so. It's the power of the I am that gives me the I can that is impossible to stop. Amen? Can I hear an amen? amen? Let's shout to the Lord. Praise God. Hallelujah. I mean, be bold about it. What have we got to be ashamed of? Everybody driving around here knows it's a church anyhow. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Praise God. Show up. Show yourself, mighty Lord. Use us. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Praise God. God bless all of you. Appreciate your patience. Go in the power of His might. Amen. Work the I can through the I am's in Jesus' name. Earth angel, earth angel, would you be mine? Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to God.